Hello, and welcome to the CougarWeb instructional video. The CougarWeb is a portal to link you to the people and services of Clearwater Christian College. This site can be accessed from on and off campus. The CougarWeb is protected with an SSL certificate to ensure that all the information on the site is kept private. To log in, into your first and last name with no spaces as your username. Your password is initially set to the last six digits of your social security number, but we strongly encourage you to change this password immediately by clicking on Modify Options once within the site. If you would like your computer to log you in automatically every time you open a browser, uncheck this box. If anyone else has access to your computer, though, leave this box checked to guarantee that your portal is not misused. Once logged in, you will be taken to your personal home page. Within this page are several modules that are used for different purposes. We will go through every module in detail shortly. At any time, a module can be minimized by clicking on the Minimize box in the top right corner of the module. Next time you return to the site, the windows will be in the same position you left them. For example, if you do not use the Student Information module or the file manager, you can minimize them, and that is how they will stay until you click on the restore button located where the minimize button was. If you minimize the communication center, the title bar will turn red if you have any messages that are unread. There is a check my email button here near the top right which will take you to the new webmail. This provides more options and is more reliable than the old webmail program. At this point, there are between 6 and 10 modules on your portal homepage, depending on what you have access to. This will expand greatly as the site develops to meet the growing needs of the college. There are many more options already in the works to make this site even more functional. Please let us at Computer Services know what we can do to help you as we work together to integrate this new tool. Now that we are done with the overview, let's take a look at the individual modules, beginning with the class manager. If you are a professor, there is a button to create a class. Clicking on this will take you to a page to set your class up. We will go through that process for faculty at the end of this video. For students, you will have a list of the classes you are enrolled in. Click on the title to enter. Once inside, there are seven modules. First, the Class Links section is where the professor can post links that may be useful to the students. Next is the Gradebook. This shows you a history of your assignments, your scores, and the class average. Remember that on any page within the Cougar Web, you have access to your email by clicking the Check My Email button. Since it opens your email in a new window, it will not interrupt what you are doing in the site. In the third module, it shows the professor's information and gives you the option to send them a memo. The top center section is announcements. These are messages posted only by the professor. Those messages that are new are bold. These can only be deleted by the teacher. Next, the Class Files module is a place for the teacher to make files of any type available to the students. This uses a file tree to view what is inside. There are many sections of the site that use this setup. To view what is within Class Resources, click on the plus sign. That will show you the next level of choices click on the plus sign next to any branch you would like to open. You can click on the minus sign to make it return. Click on the title to either open or save a file. The class syllabus is the next module. Below it shows the next three upcoming class events. Click here to view the full syllabus. You can hold your cursor over the assignment to view details. If the professor selects this as an option, you can submit your assignment online. Click Turn In and then browse to find the file 
on your computer you would like to submit. If you have already submitted the assignment, this page will tell you and not allow you to submit it again. Next, click to submit. You will receive immediate confirmation that the file has been sent. You will also receive a memo with proof of the submission. If the assignment was turned in after the time it was due, the memo will automatically tell you it is late. The final module under the class portion of the site is the class directory. You can hover over a name to see a picture. Click on the name for more detailed information. You can also send a memo to selected members of the class or to everyone at once. Select who you want to send the memo to, then click Write Memo. That completes the student's view of the class portion of the Cougar Web. The second module on the main page is Student Info. Type in any portion of a student's first or last name. For example, if you enter D-I-A-N and click Search, it will return all students that have that combination of letters in it. If you click View My Profile, it will display your detailed profile. You are the only one that can view this information. For now, it includes your general information along with your fine arts attendance records and demerits information. Hover over the specific infraction to see more details, including who gave you the demerits and any comments about it. Next is Site Options. This is where you can change your Cougar Web password. We recommend you change it to something only you know to keep your information secure. The final module in the left column is Web Forms. For now, this only includes the church attendance form, but more will be added. The next module on the main portal homepage is Calendar and Events. This is your personal calendar that already includes the college's events and your class's events. The day's events are shown here on the main screen. You can scroll through the days by clicking on these arrows. Let's look at what's coming up tomorrow. Here you see the school events, your class events, and your personal events for the day. If you click on any one of these days, you will be taken to a detailed view of that day. To return to the current day, click here. There are also three other ways to view the calendar. First, let's look at the month view. Just like every other section of the calendar, you can scroll through the months, hover to see the details, add an event, which we'll talk about in a minute, and click here to return to the current time period. The current day is marked by a yellow box. You also have the option to view the calendar in detail one week or one day at a time. To add an event, click the Add Event button, which is displayed in every one of the different calendar views. Select the start date, select the time, then select the end time. Next, enter the title and then notes if necessary. Click to save it. Now let's view that event we just added. Here you see what we just put in. You have the option to edit or delete the event that you add. Let's go back to the main page to see how to share our calendar to someone else. First, click Share. This brings you to a page to select who you want to share your calendar to. Check the box next to each person you want to give access to. Next, decide whether you would like to give them access to only view your calendar or full access to add, edit, and delete your personal events. The main sharing page now shows all the people that you are currently sharing your calendar to and allows you to change their level of control or remove them completely. You can also create custom groups in the group manager. Let's call this group Student Committee. 
and add the group members. Once this is complete, you will have this group along with your other class groups. Below, divisions of faculty and staff are already created under preset groups. These can be added to your custom groups as well. These same groups are also used in the communication center to save you time finding those people you communicate with regularly. If a calendar has been shared to you, it will appear here in the main calendar and events module. You can view their calendar much like you view your own. Next is the file manager. To add a file, click here. This shows you how much space you have used and how much is remaining. Students have a 20 megabyte limit. Faculty and staff have unlimited storage. First, find the file you would like to upload. At this time, files have to be uploaded one at a time. Next, choose how you want the file displayed in the file manager and select a folder to put it in. If you do not choose a folder, it will be saved in the folder called main. If you would like to put it in a folder that you have already created, click this plus sign to expand the tree and select the folder you want it in. Next, click to add the file. You will be told that the file was added and will have the option to upload more. To view what you have uploaded, click the plus signs to browse through your files. To share a file, click on the S. Next, select who you want to share it to, and then click to add the share. When a file is shared, there will be a hand under the file icon in your file tree. To unshare a file, click on the S next to the name again. Now it will tell you who you have the file shared to, and it will give you the option to remove them. You view files that have been shared to you the same way you view your own. You can also move files. Click on the M to the right of the file you want to move. Now, select which existing folder you want to move it to, or type in the name of a new folder. Here you can also change how the file name is displayed. To delete a file, simply click on the D next to the file and confirm that you want to permanently delete it. The Policies and Procedures section includes documents available as a reference. The files that are available to you here depend on whether you are faculty, staff, or a student. To download any file, click on the file name and select Open or Save. The final module is the Communication Center. This includes announcements, memos, and call slips. A colored box indicates the kind of message. Announcements can only be posted by administrators. Faculty and staff can send call slips to students, and everyone can send memos. Unread messages are in bold, and new announcements have a yellow background. To send a call slip, select the date the student needs to respond by, enter the message, and then select the recipient. Students will be held accountable to respond to all call slips by the date entered. Once the student has responded, the faculty member must delete the call slip from their communication center. To send a memo, enter the subject and body. Next, select the recipient. A memo can be sent to more than one person at a time. The group manager 
is also accessible from this section. Next, click Preview, and if satisfied with how it looks, click to send. When reading memos you have received, you can scroll through them using these buttons. You can mark the messages unread, can reply, and also delete. Announcements and call slips can only be deleted by the person that sent it. The final section has been added to all faculty's video to show how to create a class. First, click Create Class under the Class Manager. Enter the course prefix and number, along with the course name. Next, select how you would like your name displayed to the students. Here you have the option to have your on-campus extension and home phone number displayed. The final step is to choose from one of the following color schemes. Finally, click Create. You will now be taken to your view of the class page. In each section, you have a button to edit the information in that specific module. First, you can add a link. Type the website name and then the web address. Links can be edited or deleted at any time. Click Modify Options to change any information you entered when you first created the class. At the bottom, there is a button to delete the class when it is completed. Next is the Announcements module. Simply enter the subject, body, and expiration date. Click Submit and it will be sent to every student in the class. Class files are added just like personal files are added in your file manager. Find the files, name it, and tell it what folder to go in. The file tree is separate for every class. If you create a folder in one class, it will not be created in your other classes. Next, let's add a class event. Enter the date, time, title, and notes. You can select whether or not the students can submit an assignment online here. When you view the full syllabus, you can edit and delete assignments. This is also where you view assignments students have submitted. If there are any unread, this page will tell you. When viewing submitted assignments, it will display the student's name, file, and time uploaded. To view or save the file, click on the file name. Let's look at the gradebook. To enter grades, click Add Assignment. Next, enter the name, type, and points possible, along with what each student earned for that assignment. Adding an assignment is totally separate from adding an event in the class syllabus section. When done, click Add Assignment. To view the grades, return to the Manage Grades section. To edit an entire assignment, click on the title. To edit one person's grade, click on their score. The final module is the class directory. This displays the students and allows you to send them a memo. The difference between a memo and an announcement is that a memo can be sent to one or more individuals 
and the student can delete it once they have read it. Announcements are sent to all students in the class and you must delete it. Clicking on a name will bring up their personal contact information. Your individual portal will be different than the one used in the video due to customization and your position with the college. Things will also look different as the site develops. If you have any suggestions or find any problems with the site, please let us know. This completes the Cougar Web instructional video.